Welcome to The Makeup Historian, where we showcase honest discussions about the beauty and blemishes of various societies throughout the world and throughout time. I'm your host, Sarah Long, a former professional makeup artist turned history professor. I'm not sure if this would be relevant, but I do think that something I would be interested in listening to is the misconnotation of the use of makeup. I think that some places in society, as well as um, our generation, believes that, you know, sometimes if you wear too much makeup, you're trying to mask something. If you don't wear enough makeup, that you think you're better than everybody because you don't have to wear makeup. Um, I do really think that. And then also like the misconnotation that it puts on youth that wears makeup because they think that it makes them look prettier and they're not comfortable going outside without wearing makeup. I think that talking about that and discussing that makeup is for yourself and not for other people, even though they may admire it, it's because you want to wear it and because you feel beautiful wearing it, not because someone else makes you wear it. And as well as if you don't want to wear it, that you're still beautiful too. That's perfectly fine. So I think the misconnotation of the use of makeup and why um, society wears it and uses it to express themselves. I noticed that there was a podcast episode that discussed about how people feel when they see other people wearing red lipstick or when they are the one that is wearing red lipstick. I would be very interested in knowing how people feel when they wear or see other people wear other lipstick colors. For example, people usually associate the black lipstick to being emo, goth, or being depressed. I would like to know if people who wear black lipstick actually feel that way or why we automatically assume that they are depressed. I wonder how other people would feel when they see other colors, like blue, green, yellow, and etc. So I would like to see that being discussed in future episodes of The Makeup Historian. In future episodes of The Makeup Historian, I would love to hear about um, social justice. Um, Like I said before, in a different... um, in a different question, I said that I feel like historians really find the actuality of an event. Um, we read all these social leaders, all these people who are, you know, very credited people and do their research. But when it comes to history, it's it's not black or white. It's or I mean, there's different theories when it comes down to it, but it's based off facts and not just feelings, which I feel is a huge part of decision making and. I feel like historians have a lot to bring to the table on what's happened in our past with social justice, what's happening. Um, History always repeats itself. So I think that finding the actuality of an event is so important. So I'd love to see it from a historian's point of view. I will be answering what topics would you like to see discussed in future episodes of the Makeup Historian and Why. Um, I feel like it would be very interesting if we learned about, um, like, drag queens and, like, their perspective of makeup and why um, they do certain makeup trends on their face a certain way. I think that would be super interesting to understand their perspective of makeup and how it makes them feel empowered, you know? And I would also like to learn about how they would like for them to be viewed in their makeup, you know? Like, when we see someone in red lipstick we're like oh they're sexy so how do they feel when we see them in like a certain eyeshadow or something like is there meaning more to their makeup looks like their eyeshadow lips their blush looks you know i think that would be very interesting the topics i would like to hear in the future episodes of the makeup historian will be um about like technology about the whole online work and online classes for everybody um for COVID like in my opinion like in my case my personal experience it was a good thing but most of the time I hear like bad comments about like moms um Adults, kids, everybody complaining about online classes. But for me, my personal experience, it was a good thing because my teenager actually got better. So I would like to hear about that. What topics would you like to see discussed in a future episode of 
the makeup historian and why. Um, definitely about Aquafina. Although yes, uh, Aquafina the product created was not a, um, actual makeup product used, but it was sold in the makeup industry. It was a cover up as a makeup. It had products that were used for makeup to help disguise what it was a poison. Um, and I heard that the person who created helped kill a lot of men who were abusive or weren't uh, kind to the wife. And it seems like a very interesting thing to know more about. Hey, makeup historian. I would like to see a future episode from you about the use of makeup in the um, 19th and 20th century. They changed dramatically due to uh, industrialization. And so it'd be very interesting to learn about the changes that these women have put forward to finding makeup products or coloring products, applying them to themselves and uh, utensils they use to apply their makeup. And I think that'd be very cool and interesting to learn. What topics would I like to see discussed in future episodes of The Makeup Historian and why? So I didn't start listening to The Makeup Historian, which is your podcast, until two days ago um, because I've always listened to like, um, there's a news podcast, history podcast, and crime podcast I listen to, and I didn't finish my other history podcast until two days ago. Um, But I would love to see what you think is going to repeat itself within the American government because that other podcast was talking about something very similar like things in the past that happened in the U.S. government that you think a hundred percent are happening now are going to happen again um because that would be so interesting to listen to a topic that I would love to see discussed in future episodes of The Makeup Historian would be the conviction of Chauvin. I believe that's how it's pronounced, um, the person who killed George Floyd, um, and how this has been an issue in the country for centuries, and see how the problem has evolved over time. I believe that from history, we have seen that there has been equality and there has been a progress in the country when it comes to treating um african-americans with more dignity and respect but that still is an issue in the country and we can't face the other way um so i would also like to discuss the measures amendments laws and bills that have been passed to eradicate this and discuss their success and their failure and what we can do to improve going forward so i saw that you did a podcast on the history of red lipstick so i think it would also be very fun to explore the history of eyeliner and I think maybe specifically um, winged eyeliner or something that falls into the category of winged eyeliner that goes um, on the that is supposed to go on the top of your lid. Um, I think the very first time I was ever introduced to winged eyeliner was when I saw a Cleopatra style ad in a magazine and I was like five and I said that I wanted to do that so badly and of course everyone was like no you're too young to be doing that Uh, but I have been obsessed with winged eyeliner ever since and I know that it has been in lots of cultures for a very very long time and I would really like to learn about the history of that because I just think it would be very very fascinating. A topic that I would think would be interesting for your next podcast would be Victorian cosmetics. Um, I know a lot of the cos- uh, the ingredients uh, in the cosmetics back then were toxic. Um, I know that some products included uh, lead, mercury, and arsenic and ammonia um, because a lot of these products were aimed at achieving a pill, com- a pill complexion, which indicated that the women didn't have to work. You know, they were in the sun, they were indoors. So I think that would be interesting. Um, you know, maybe you can go into the, the history of why this was a, a status symbol and all the crazy ingredients that went into cosmetics back then would be interesting. I think belladonna was one of them too. I think women would put belladonna in their eyes, which is poisonous. I have already touched base on this. I didn't go to the very beginning of your podcast, but I did, I did listen to some of the recent ones. Um, The topics that I would like to see discussed 
in the future episodes of Making Historian would be how you originally got into makeup because I love makeup but I am not very good at it. How did you get your skills? Where did was there trial and error? Was did you ever fail? How was that journey for you as a makeup artist? And how are you feeling as a college history teacher? Um, I would love to see the impact of religion on the development of countries and nations or even government and policies discussed uh, on the makeup historian. It seems that everywhere I look, religion is being used uh, as an excuse to justify actions or laws, whether it's terrorism, topic of abortion, and even vaccinations are being discussed right now. Right. One thing I would probably want to hear on your, uh, about a topic on your podcast would probably be, well, what would happen if the government actually took away our guns? Like, what are some upsides? What are some downsides? What are some possibilities that, uh, you know, how the people might react? Will they, uh, you know, will they fight back? Will they give in and just let everyone take them? You know, what, uh, I kind of feel like maybe there might even be wars started up and, uh, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that could go down if the government decides just to wait to ban firearms and seize every single citizen who possesses a firearm, just take away everything, you know. And I know people would be upset, but how would they react? Would they fight back? Would they let the government just do their job? Or would something just huge just break out because of it? You know, I'm very curious to hear what um, some possibilities of that. Um... What topics would I like to see discussed in the future episodes of The Makeup Historian and why? Um, at first, I thought I was asking for, like, histories of actual makeup. But I thought about it and I would like to learn about history of how women started wearing makeup and how that suddenly started changing throughout from the very start to up till now and how much of a difference it has made in the lives of just not women themselves but also men and other sexualities. Some topics I would like to see discussed in future episodes of The Makeup Historian will have to be life tips and how to do your taxes or buy a house, etc., etc., and things just to help uh, the student out. Normal things schools don't teach you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you would like to send in your response to the featured research question, download the Anchor app, Follow the Makeup Historian podcast and send in a voice message to the show. Research is ongoing and every response helps. Besides, you never know, your response could be featured in a future episode.